so these are the tappet covers that is for exhaust connected to the exhaust manifold and this is the intake one con uh, connected to your fuel injector intake manifold just clean it up so that while you open this yeah you can use a blower as well it's uh, okay though I'm just gonna it's not I don't see anything clinging I find it handy to remove this these two screws and remove this assembly so that I can get good access to this so let's first uh, do this 10 mm just unscrewing these to make life slightly easier I have to remove this spark plug as well I'll tell you why I do that and then move to opening the main clamp now I'll just put this back in its place so that I know it is not lost I do lose a lot of these next up opening the spark plug and the tappet covers easy let me unscrew this so the plug is out so I have attached this arm makes it kind of easy but if you don't have this it's still doable so there are two bolts one on this side and one there on the other side again same for intake one one on this side and one well you get get the idea let me open these then. yeah so these are 8mm so I have opened three of them uh, both for the intake one and one for the exhaust one from this side now this is where uh, the this bendable arm comes in handy uh, for the exhaust one that is on the left side let me open this now so all the nuts are out you simply just bring it out now here are the four nuts this is the exhaust one and the intake one again lifting it so yeah these are out now I'll just do a bit more of cleaning as you can see there is some just there it would be a good idea to actually blow it out before you clean it with the blower but well I can do it this way as well let me clean this so just use some fuel to clean that area now these are the tools that I'll be using this is a tappet holder it has this square cut into it that is used to hold there are different shapes and kinds but yeah this is what I use so yeah these are the feeler gauges so the recommended range is 0.8 to 10 on the intake so it can be either 8 or 9 or 10 and on the exhaust they recommend 0.23 to 25 now I have a 25 uh, a bit old but I don't have a 23.23 so I just have 2.20 and then 25 so to accommodate for that what I'll do is I'll use 15 and I'll just say add 8 to it and this will make 0.23 I hope you get the idea if you have access to uh, 20.23 or 0.24 well good enough but yeah this is what I'll be doing so I'll show you what now this is a simple process but it is gonna look difficult because I'll be using one hand to hold the camera and the second uh, hand to operate this but I'll try my best so let's go now the idea is you rotate it clockwise now I hope you understand there are four strokes so yeah uh, just the basic uh, so intake uh, is the first in the four stroke then second one is compression third is ignition and fourth is exhaust now my understanding is if I rotate it anti-clockwise which they ask us not to do uh, I can get that in the complete sequence but when I'm rotating it clockwise I get that in the opposite sequence so I'll show you what that means and how they have recommended doing this so we start moving it now let's see where we have the which we have to just look which one is going down well none of them is going down so I think we must be at compression or ignition but we'll get to know soon now since we're going reverse Ideally, yeah, as you see, so the exhaust one has started to go down. Yeah, that is going down, that is completely down, and now it is up. So, 
next should be compression and none of the walls should idly move let's see ignition and nothing is moving now we have to bring it to intake where the in intake wall that is this one starts to go down so not moving not moving now moving yeah now as you see it's moving now I can slightly bring it back and now we are in intake stroke now this is the thing that I do to make sure that I'm in the correct stroke I use a clean kind of uh, this is cleanish clean screwdriver not to drop it in and I see so it is going all the way down you see the distance there I have to move these yeah I hope you can see the distance so this is all the way down now I have to bring it to next stroke which is the compression one and that would mean that the screwdriver would be at would start coming up but I'm not going to leave it inside don't do that it will damage your piston but I'll just check that once I feel I'm there so the screwdriver is out going to that side carry on now on this side I'm just going to move it up to gauge where and I can feel the piston is coming up now let's insert the screwdriver and see it is let me show you from the other side now see how much uh, it has come out it is not going in no force applied no nothing so we are very close to TDC now so what I'll be doing now is I have left the screwdriver in I'll be rotating it just about slightly keeping it in hand and I'll feel if it starts to go down don't leave it in trust me don't leave it in now when I rotate it, it's starting to go down. So that means I'm moving in exhaust. I bring it up again. Sorry for the background noise. And see, now this is this much up. Again, slightly more up, more up. Coming more up, more up. And it is stagnant here. Now it's starting to go down. Now this is why I use a screwdriver. Better doing it with this going down and you get the idea that is what we have to do this is what I would say is TDC this right here so yeah screwdriver all out and here if you see uh, you see a T mark right so that is for TDC and that is where we need our piston to be and these are the marks in here I don't think you can see them you're supposed to align those they do align and now another way is you can also open this one and there is a cut there is this cover then there is another cover once you open both the covers there is a slight cut on a nut that again has to be like this but I don't need to open this because I already know that this is a TDC now let's move on to check if the walls are okay sorry not the walls are okay but let's see if the clearance is okay 